the 2018 Commonwealth Innovation Forum. Brought to you by Destination Gold Coast. Stefan Wellink is from Stefan Wellink and Associates. Uh, he's here at TCIF as one of the moderators on day two of the Commonwealth Innovation Forum. Stefan, welcome. Thank you, Anthony. It's a pleasure to be here. You have an extraordinary um, background. You you are or were a scientist. I guess you're once a scientist, always a scientist. You worked for the CSIRO. Then you moved into documentary filmmaking which you still dabble in today and now you're back in the in the world of science are you mad yes it is a short answer um i'm running what i call a portfolio career so i'm at the stage of my life now where i can be a bit more selective about what i do and so i'm able to work in in two areas that i'm passionate about science and filmmaking how did you get into science I always loved it. I, I was one of those kids that sat with dinosaurs and models and chemistry kits and used to blow things up and get kicked out of the classroom for being disruptive for asking too many questions. So that was that was sort of part of me. And I think it's in the DNA, I think. Um, and I just got uh, I just got hooked on science and, and I joined a company called Unilever uh, as an undergraduate and they put me through university and I worked in the central research lab there and that was a really great grounding for me and uh, started working in food science, a bit of bio- biological sciences and uh, then got involved with CSIRO where I worked for about 12 or 13 years in the area of agribusiness and life sciences and that was a, again a wonderful experience working with government, reporting into ministers, briefing ministers. Uh, I was on a panel that presented to the Prime Minister of the day, John Howard, on the commercialisation of technology. All the things that I think are the engine room of, of, of nations, I think science really is the engine room. Science and engineering is the engine room. I think from a cultural point of view and, and, and the way we, we gratify ourselves, it's the arts. So if you can put them both together, which I seem to have done recently, it's not a bad way to live, really. And at, at what point did you make the transition into documentary filmmaking? It was about 10 years ago. Um, I was at UTS at that point, Uni of Technology Sydney, and I got together with some people to uh, co-author a book on Australia's Nobel laureates. And uh, at that stage, they were all men, so we hadn't had a woman Nobel. We have now, which is good. Um, and th- we launched the book at UTS, and I had a, we had Peter Doherty there launching it with me, and we had uh, some of the, uh, um, the grandchildren of the Nobel laureates who are no longer with us. Great celebration of science. And uh, when I finished talking and I said during my talk that any one of these men would make a wonderful documentary. And I stepped off the podium and this woman came over to me in tears and she said, when you said documentary, what did you mean? And I said, well, I'm sorry if I upset you, but what I meant was we should make documentaries. And she said, well, I'm Sonia Pemberton. I work at ABC uh, and Head of Factual. And if any, anyone wins a Nobel Prize from Australia, I'll get the money and I'll get you involved. I forgot all about this, of course. I thought it was a lovely thing to say. But about six or eight months later, uh, Marshall and Warren were announced as the Nobel Laureate for Medicine for discovering the cause of ulcers. Here they go back to pylori. And I was driving into UTS and the phone rang and, and hello, Sonia here. I had, oh, hello, Sonia. And she said, when can you start? And I said, when can I start what? She said, well, you've heard the announcement. I said, yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Well, I got the money for the documentary. And I got involved, I did the research and helped produce that docker. And it, was a, it just opened my eyes to another world of what was possible. It was so exciting. You know. And, uh, and you, you remain in the documentary, um, I guess, uh, environment. And you have most recently have worked on um, a documentary about Rod Taylor, of course, famous Australian, went on to Hollywood to create some of the, the most memorable films, The Birds and The Time Machine, and Jerry Lewis you did as well. We did, yeah, we did both those films. Uh, Meeting Rod Taylor was wonderful for me because as a a young boy growing up and my passion for science, my dad took me to see The Time Machine and and I I was just blown away. And and then dad said to me, well, that guy came from Lidcombe, which is western suburbs of Sydney, which is close to where we were living. And I remember thinking, really, Aussies can... Aussies can do that. They can, they can actually go to Hollywood and get into movies. And, uh, and Dad said, sure. And so many years later, uh, I, I thought if I was going to make a film, what would I make? And I knew about Rod Taylor. So I wrote a 10-page document. I thought it'll never see the light of day. And then a bit of serendipity. Uh, Sonia Pemberton, who I mentioned, uh, was leaving the ABC. I went to her farewell. Walked up to a bar. She said, go and get a drink. I walked up to a bar, ordered my drink. And then this guy came and stood next to me and ordered a drink. 
we looked at each other and said, hello, I'm Steph. And he said, hi, I'm Robert. I said, what do you do, Robert? He said, I make documentary films. And I said, what on? He said, oh, Errol Flynn, Peter Finch, other great actors. I said, well, I've got an idea for a film on Rod Taylor. And we connected and five years later the film came out. And you, you got to meet Rod in his final years or his final months maybe? Final years. It was the last two years of his life and we, we met him on three different occasions. The first time, well, he said to us, yeah, you can come to the house but no one's going to watch a, want to watch a film on me and why would you want to make it? So we went to see him and he got comfortable with us and uh, then we went back and, and he'd been quite ill. But it was interesting that he was as ill as he was and we weren't sure we were able to film him on the day we turned up. He said, look, just put me in my chair, give me five minutes. And we did. Did a bit of makeup, And as soon as the lights turned on and the camera rolled, it was Rod Taylor, the film star. And, and he just came to life, you know. And, and he told these wonderful anecdotes. We had him there for nine hours. And he was a very ill man. As soon as the, everything went off, he basically collapsed you know but it, for him I think it was lovely because he was connecting with Aussies he'd been in Hollywood for, for 60 years and as he used to say to me it's not the real world but you know meeting guys like you I, I, I go back to my, my youth in Australia and, and that's the place I love you know. Is there one story from Rod Taylor in particular that you that sort of is at the forefront of, of your mind? He tells so many that I can't repeat but, but and <laughs> we've got him on film uh, and one day we might use him yeah, look, there, there was one. He, he was, uh, and it's in the film. Rod, uh, Rod was a terrible card player, but he liked playing cards, and he was a good friend of John Wayne. And, and John Wayne, uh, they made a movie together uh, called The Train Robbers in the early 70s. And John Wayne took him for about two or 3000 US dollars in a couple of card games. And Rod went to his manager and said, you've got to write a cheque to John Wayne for two or 3000 His manager said, you know, you silly Aussie. And, he, and they did, and they sent it off. And that became the first of a number of times that John Wayne thrashed Rod at cards and Rod sent him checks. And one day, John Wayne invited him to his, uh, his boat down in Balboa. And uh, Rod said, I went in and there were all these, you know, Oscar and trophies on the wall. And there was this framed, this frame with all these uncashed checks that I'd sent him over the years. And John Wayne sort of saying, that was from you, that was from you. He didn't cash them. John Wayne didn't cash them. And so there was about $100,000 in checks that were just, just there because... So Rod didn't trace his money very well, but I guess his business manager knew. I, I just thought that was a magnificent story. That is a magnificent story. And, and now back to the world of science, I guess forever in one's blood. How important is, is it for Commonwealth nations to be under the one roof as we have here at TCIF? I think it's terribly important. I, I think it's critical. Um, I think this is about it's about innovation. Uh, it's about collaboration. That's why we're here. It's about friendship too. It's it's about all those things, and 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 it's about community. I think it's it's those four things, and I and I'm feeling that here. And it's the first time I think this has been held, and so it's it's a testament I think to the organisers that, that there there's such a great feeling here. Look, innovation to me, that's the engine room of, of any nation. And in the case of the Commonwealth, it's the engine room for the Commonwealth. If we can harness the best and brightest to do the things that we know we're capable of, if we can get together and look at the issues that need to be solved and if we can actually work together in a common purpose, I think we could be unbeatable. And we'd be the equal of China, the US, uh, you know, Russia, who are certainly in the top tier. We're not quite there, but we're not far behind them. Are there issues that for you are most important and should be raised in, an, in, a, in a forum environment like TCIF? That's, yeah, there, there, are, there are a number of them. I, I, I think uh, how, trans, uh, how technology is transferred, how, how knowledge is transferred is, is fundamental here. I think we might be a bit guilty in Australia of over-regulating that. Um, I like open, open technology. I like open transfer of technology where it makes sense, where it's for the common good and where it's about quality of life. I don't want to see our, our knowledge wrapped up in one company or two companies or even 100 companies. I mean, I think there are things that the government should be funding, and I think there are things in health. Um, I, I think there are things in food security, and I think there are things in, 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 in shelter. So, f you know, food, clothing, shelter and health. We, we, I think the government owes us that. We pay our taxes, and I think if we can research in those areas and make those things better... Uh, the future will be bright. And that's the same across the Commonwealth, I believe. Are there lessons we can learn from developing countries within the Commonwealth that you know, the, the, the richer countries may benefit from? 
We don't smile as much as people in the developing nations. And what I've seen, when I've visited a number of them over the years, they always seem to be happy. They could be living in a shanty, but they, they're happier than me. And I've got everything, you know, and we all have you know, in our society. So there's something about struggle. There's something about when, when there's an attainment made after a struggle of achievement that you celebrate and then you move on. I think a lot of us achieved early or weren't under any duress and we've been blessed. We owe it to the developing nations, I believe, to, to take them on a journey with us and help them to get to where they could be, you know. Uh, that, that's what I'd like to see. That might sound like utopia, but I guess that's the science in me. And the filmmaker coming out saying, well, you know, wouldn't it be lovely to have a happy ending? You know? And that's, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> and uh, what would you like the delegates to take away from TCIF? I'd like them to go back to their desk and, and not be overwhelmed by what's, what's there when they get back into their offices and, because all this will be forgotten. Uh, I think that's what normally happens. I'd like them to take away at least one message that, that they might talk to their superiors about or talk to their peers about or talk to the people that, that, that they manage about and say, well, I, this is what I learned. Here's one thing that maybe we can use to do things better in our operation or to do things better at home. I mean, that would be lovely um, to do that. I'd like to be talking about this event for the next few months, not just say, well, it was nice and here I am and, you know, oh, woe was me, we're back, you know. I mean, that, that would be nice. I hope it has that sort of effect. You're a wonderful storyteller and story maker and uh, we appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks so much, Anthony. It's been great. Lovely to chat to you.